Hi, this is Rob Cornish from GainHigherGround.com and I'm here at the greatest Facebook show on earth. I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Mr. Chris Farrell himself. So, hello Chris. Rob, I am honoured to be spending some time with you. Well, Very nice meeting you today. Yeah, absolutely, Very and the, nice. sa the same to you, so it's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you, now, sir. the first question I have to ask you, Chris, is that you know, you're well known for uh, sort of, well, it sounds like a very glamorous lifestyle over in Beverly Hills in LA. <laughs> uh, so how are you finding the weather back here in uh, London? Oh, man. It's really cold. What's all that about? Now, I landed, uh, actually, when I landed, it was really sunny, and I had some texts from some friends saying, bring your woolies, it's really cold. Yeah. So I packed them all and landed, and it was beautiful weather. I have yeah. to say, although I do live in California now, I do love England and I do love London and I just love the whole mm. Londoners. I love the mix of history and you've got the Starbucks next to the Tower of London. So. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I love England in the summer when it is yeah. nice, um, but I, you know, I also I love the East Coast. I did a road trip up the uh, sorry the West Coast of the US. Did you? Where did a few, you go? A couple of years ago. Well, I did right from. Um, the, the Mexican border right up to Olympic Park in wow. Washington State. And highway one, highway one, one. Pacific? No, the Pacific, no, Highway 1. So I got to see okay. all the great scenery and just to, like really, really love it out there. Yeah. So you're very That's lucky. But, uh, but anyway, back to business. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting off a tangent <laughs> here, yeah. I suppose, my fault. Um, but um, I think one thing that you're very well known for is obviously your membership site, but your incredible eloquent teaching style and just very methodical step Thank by you. step and I don't think there's that many or if any other people out there in the internet marketing, marketing community that do that so where did that come from Chris I mean what Rob like, you're you know, a lovely guy to even ask that and um, I, I know exactly where it came from and it, it came from the fact that and this will sound a little bit contrived so forgive me it came from that's exactly how I need to learn things I would get so frustrated when people would try and explain complex matters, seemingly trying to make it easy to understand. And they, I felt, weren't talking to me, they were talking at me. And they would throw yeah. out terms and expressions that supposedly were second nature. One guy, for example, when I was starting, even said to me, this is actually your words, he said, just go to your FTP, bro FTP program and go into your public underscore HTML directory. Now, if anyone's watching this, doesn't, <laughs> if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's fine, because it meant nothing to me. I don't think it's got to be a, a simple way. And I ended up questioning myself. I don't know if you've ever done this. I ended Absolutely. up starting thinking, am I yeah. stupid? I mean, honestly, am I stupid? Maybe I actually am. Because this is supposedly really simple, so everybody says. And anyhow, yeah. I quickly realised that most people, I don't know if it's because I'm English or, or, or it's because I need... I am, I am a slow learner. I really am. I need stuff explained really clearly and succinctly until I understand it. Yeah. So my overall objective, to answer your question, my overall objective was I need to explain stuff how I would need to have it explained to yeah. me. Yeah. And I thought if I can really do that without patronising anyone, without condescending anyone, by you saying, you know, really taking it s way too slow, but still convey the, the pertinent information in an easy to understand manner, I just thought, I think people might be interested in this. Yeah. And I had no idea that, you know, so many would be. Yeah, well, it's certainly, I mean, your, your membership site is uh, absolutely fantastic, I think. And it's certainly, you know, the success of it in a very short, relatively short period of time is obviously shows that people are interested in exactly that. But the, also last year, Chris, you did a very big uh, product launch uh, with Mike Phil Say. Yeah. And um, I'm actually in the middle of a product launch myself in the stock market niche. Wow. And this is my first launch, and I make, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes already. It's still going well, but yeah. I'm, it's a massive learning curve for me. Yeah. Um, so, what, what's your general advice on, on on product launches and things to well look out for? Product launches, firstly, are not a business; they're a nice bonus. I don't think right. any any marketer that uses product launches as a as their business model it's flawed because it's only a certain amount of time. You get this spike of traffic, you're relying on affiliates. It's not really a, a business. It's not really a system that works. Yeah. As a bonus, it can be great. I think you have to... Like a successful product launch does rely on affiliates. I was very lucky that Mike Phil Same actually approached me. He'd heard a lot about me and um, he liked what I was doing and he checked me out. And getting, you know, arguably... Not even arguably, probably the, the, the largest internet marketer in the world. Yeah, team, obviously is, is going to help raise my profile but a 
key to success with product launches is really having affiliates or a very responsive list of your own. Without okay. either, then I think you're going to find it a little bit tough. Very strong, yeah, very yeah. tough. Yeah. How's your launch gone? Are you in the process? Uh, well, uh, at the moment, I'm actually in beta testing. Okay. So I'm, it's four weeks, I'm two weeks in, and okay. we've got a group of about 20 people. Who are just uh, testing the product? Can you, can you get an indication with it? how it's going to go? Yeah, it's, so far it's going well. But I also found that I've created this product myself, taken from scratch. Wow. And after a while, um, I don't know if you find this, Chris, but you can't see the wood from the trees because you're so deep into it yourself. Yeah. You need someone else to come in, and it's it's really obvious stuff that I just thought, should have thought of, and I haven't. And there are, so far, it's only, the feedback's been very good, and it's only just minor things that need adjusting. But still, uh, you know, it's it's great to have that beta testing phase. Hopefully, we can debug, iron out any glitches, and then go for a full launch. You know, yeah, hopefully. So is this your first big launch? Oh, oh, first launch of any kind. Yeah. Wow. So um, good luck. But but anyway, so that's really interesting what you say about the business model not being absolutely it's, viable. So, so hence your membership site. Yeah, continuity. I think it's a flawed. Honestly, I think product launch is right. a flawed business model. Flawed in the aspect that it's not a business. It's yeah. a nice bonus. But you can't have a business based on that. And to the flip side of that is something like a membership site. Yeah. I love the business model of a membership site. Yeah. Why do I love it? Because it's continuity based. Because you only have to sell something once. We all struggle with selling things. Absolutely. I struggle with selling things. I often talk about the fact that nobody likes to be sold to, but we all like to buy. And therefore, if there's a continuity program, and by continuity, I mean something that has a recurring billing structure built in. So you only need to make one sale once at the beginning, and yet it rebuilds every month. What a wonderful business model. Now, that said, it sounds idyllic, doesn't it, saying that, but you still have to make sure you deliver the content. You can't kind of sit back. I know a lot of people that have tried membership sites and they see dollar signs in their eyes and they think, I need to make a sale once and I can sit back. Well, people leave very quickly to continually deliver the content. Yeah. So I think if you're prepared to work in it, continuity, this might be something, you know, your next product, continuity product this is, for me, just wonderful because not, anything you create from now on, if you create other products, put them into your membership site mm. and it adds perceived value to your membership site which keeps retention longer it's it's a win-win yeah you can keep a low, henry t ford you know better the, the car he kind of had this philosophy so he, his philosophy was sell them cheap but sell a lot of them so did ray crock the guy that invented mcdonald's, McDonald's yeah, yeah exactly great great marketer sandy passed away now great businessman you know sell them cheap yeah but sell a lot of them that's 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 fun you know, great advice, and not actually something that I know. There's a few people, Ryan Lee and so on, that are talking about membership sites, but but not that many people talk about the power, the absolute raw power of continuity. So no. if you're willing to go that extra step, maybe that's yeah. That's, Ryan you're is definitely great right. I know Ryan very well. He's a right. super guy. He has had a lot of success doing continuity, and he's got a new thing called micro continuity. Yeah, so, so very cheap, lower than five dollars yeah. or something. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, very interesting stuff. So just fine, it's so kind of you to talk to us, Rob, uh, Chris. My pleasure, uh, It's sir. great. But uh, to, in today's conference, one of the things that you said, and I've heard you say this before, is that you actually started thinking about an online business in 2003. Yes. But it took you five years until 2008 to actually yeah. take action. And maybe that was partly procrastination and so on. But I think that there's a lot of people out there that are in that kind of situation that you were in for that five years so what, what, if you could give them one message what, what what would it be the message would be and it's terribly corny so do forgive <laughs> me really, oh, i've heard it a thousand times before that's but okay anyone that's successful if that's the right word to use they all say the same thing they just started it's so easy in this business to get caught up in the paralysis of analysis and should i do this or should i do that if we've all been victim of information overload the most successful people I've realized in any business are not the most intelligent. They are not the most intelligent. What they are is they're the people that actually took action. And there's nothing more annoying, is it, than somebody that's doing very well and you think you could do it better than them. But the it, thing that they yeah. did have is tenacity. They actually did it. Yeah. And most people, you know, we're, we're, this is a human flaw. We all convince ourselves, ah, I, someone else can do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't try out of a web business. I can't understand how to generate traffic. I can't understand Facebook. Ah, it's all too confusing. That's the easy, that's the easy to it. So I would honestly say, I know everyone's heard it a thousand times before, I'm, I'm not reinventing the wheel, it's take action. And the second thing, I'm going to add a second thing, is build a list. I know everybody says this again, but 100% of my income, 100% comes from my list. 
you know, there's ways of building your list. You build it ethically. You build a list of people interested in a certain subject matter and then develop a relationship with that list. A lot of people miss this out. They try and sell straight away, which is why it took me six months before I made anything. I really worked hard, really hard. I did free, I learned how to do TV shows online, webinars. I really wanted to deliver content to my list because mark my words, if you are good to your list, when the time comes, your list will be good back to you. So there are two things I would say. Well, I think that's some fantastic advice to end on, Chris. So I'd just like to say thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and some oh, great yeah. value there. So, uh, we're, doing all right. the, we're doing the, the LA handshake here. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten about that one. <laughs> all right, well, thanks very much, Chris. I really appreciate Good it. Good luck with your launch. And I, I, when we speak again, I want to hear about your continuity programme. Okay, all right. Rob, well, you're a gentleman. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Chris Farrell.